Kane and killing Sean, in my opinion, is the most savage kill in power history, including every single book. If you ask me, in my opinion, because Kane and killing Sean, his own flesh and blood. It's a culmination of so many things, so many emotions and thoughts that Kanan had in his head for years. It's it's Kanan realizing that his son is really not about that life and his son is not the son that he always wanted. This is what, in fact, brought him closer to Tariq in a way. And made it more possible for him to not see the Tariq setup coming that ultimately cost him his life, right? Even though he went out in the blaze of glory. But this kill was so epic, you know? This kill set off the trope slash trend that we don't need to see anymore because we just seen it in force. So it's already happened three, four times, which is the, the father-son, son-father trope where the father or son kills the father or son, right? But when you think about it, it's Canaan was the first guy to kill his son for being disloyal before he had to find out the hard way that his son was disloyal, like Ghost did, right? Like uh, Walter Flynn did. Not like how Tommy's father did because Tommy's father came out being disloyal from the jump and that ultimately cost him his life regardless of how it happened. But it started the trend of the father-son kill, the son-father kill that we see. And let's examine why this is the most savage kill to this day. And I'm saying this because I'm going to put together a series of videos where I detail all the most savage kills in power history. And after watching this scene again between Kanan and Sean, I realized that this has to be the most savage kill because of everything that took place to get to this point. Right? So you got Kanan who... From the moment he got locked up, he pretty much automatically knew that Ghost and Tommy, or at least Ghost and Tommy, that Ghost and Tommy, or at least Ghost, set him up to do time. So he's doing all these years in prison. He knows Ghost did what he did, but he rocking Ghost to sleep the whole time. He's like, hey, take care of my son, please. Can you take care of me? So he's milking Ghost and telling Ghost to take care of his son because he's assuming he'll have more control of his son than Ghost when he comes home. He wants his son, in his mind, he wants his son to learn all the intimate details about Ghost's life and his business as he can without telling Sean at a too young of an age the reason for his motives. He's spending all this time hoping that Sean is more like him than Ghost. He's spending all this time pretending to still be cool with Ghost while he's figuring out a way to infiltrate Ghost's business and kill him and Tommy and take over the business. He's doing all this covert stuff. He's being as sneaky as possible He's doing all this, and then he comes home. He comes home, he's still playing nice, but then he reveals his plan to his son, Sean. And he's expecting his son, Sean, to be loyal to him because he's Sean's daddy. He's Sean's daddy. So rightfully so, he's expecting his flesh and blood to be more loyal to him than Ghost. He's expecting his son to have it in him to be a dangerous killer just like he was which is ironic now that we're watching Raising Canaan because we see that 
Sean may have really had the potential in him to become a demon if he was exposed to it a little bit more early. Just like we see Kanan now as a young, he didn't have it in him at all. He was scared to do things until he jumped off the porch, right? But he didn't live long enough, right? Or he lived too long, he wasn't exposed to it to now that ship has sailed, right? But you got Kane to come home and then he gives his son chances to prove his loyalty. He gives his son chances to the point where now it's exposed now. Ghost is realizing that Sean and Kanan is up to something. He still gives Sean chances. And then you have Kanan give Sean his final chance. And he says, yo, listen. Kill Ghost. Sean doesn't do it. Sean feels like Kanan is despicable. And he's tough enough to run into Kanan and express himself in that way to Kanan, right? Right? Which Kanan act like it didn't affect him. But it hurt his feelings. It hurt his feelings. When Sean told him, yo, you just a bitter thug. You just a hater. Nobody wants to deal with you anymore. You washed up. It hurt his feelings. And it also made him decide, okay, my son has no loyalty or respect for me. He got to die. So when Sean is stupid enough to say, I'm going to run away with Tasha and the kids. And <laughs> you can deal with ghosts. We see Kanan do what no one expected him to do at that point, which is he pops Sean. Sean falls back. And then we have the gangster, most gangster dialogue that I feel like it's gotta be top three most gangster dialogue to someone talking to someone they're about to kill within the power universe. And then all the lines he gave him, he's like, you too soft to be my son. Who you calling on that phone? What you about to call the police? You a rat? You a rat? Who you gonna call? Mommy? Who you gonna call? Ghost? You gonna call Ghost on me? <laughs> Nigga ain't never here when you really need him, is he? <laughs> you ain't my son. And then he says whatever he else he's gonna say. And then he pops. Sean head off right then and there. Right then and there. The savagery of it. The fact, the fact that 50 Cent was beefing with his real son at the time <laughs> when they recorded this scene. The fact that people can conspire. Did 50 really want to do this scene, right? Right? As as a subtle hint to a son. That if you, his real son, that if you keep playing with me, this can happen to you. <laughs> All the conspiracies that that came after this. <laughs> the fact that this is the first time within OG Power that we see the father-son related kill. Which we have now seen three, four times. That we thought we may were going to see with D-Mag and JP. It's just the most savage kill to me. The culmination of everything that happened in the story up to that point. The fact that Sean actually thought he was going to ride off into the sunset. The fact that Kanan was disrespected to his face by his son. And he had to realize right then and there that he lost his son to another man. Because he wasn't there to mold him. The fact that he decided right then and there, I have no more use for my son because he's not loyal to me at all. I have to kill him. And then he decided to just do it. It has to be the most savage kill, the most gangster kill and culmination of dialogue that I've seen in the entire power universe timeline. It has to be. It has to be. But if y'all want me to make more videos on what I feel are the most savage kills, or you have a suggestion on what the next Savage Kill video should be. If you agree with me that this is the most Savage Kill in the Power Universe's timeline's history, let me know in the comment section. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.